It's early in the morning in El Hierro. The trade winds are blowing the clouds over the volcanic mountains. This Spanish island off the west coast of Africa is almost always windy, so why not make use of it? The smallest of the Canary Islands is trying to realize big plans to supply all of its around 7,000 inhabitants with sustainable energy through a unique combination of wind and hydropower. The energy shift has cost 83 million euros and ran 20 million over budget. Critics say that's far too much, even if half was covered by EU subsidies. But the project still has enthusiastic supporters. I think it's very positive that El Hierro was able to actually implement this project. At the beginning, a lot of people doubted it could be done. But today it's a project that works, one that creates jobs and brings in money. In the next few years, it'll turn a profit. The wind turbines produce more than enough energy to meet the island's own needs. The extra electricity is used to pump water 700 meters up to a reservoir basin. Its 150,000 cubic meters are a kind of natural insurance against windless days. If the wind power drops off, the water flows back downhill through a hydropower turbine bridging the shortfall. This one-of-a-kind combination of energy from wind and water is aimed at reaching an elusive goal, providing a steady, unbroken stream of power even when nature doesn't play along. But things haven't worked out quite as planned. Because the region is earthquake-prone, the basins had to be built smaller than originally designed. Providing the entire island with green energy was always an ambitious goal, and it still hasn't been reached. Last year, the new facility only generated 40% of the power consumed on El Hierro. The original calculations were higher, but structural problems meant those plans couldn't be realized. What really threw them out of kilter was the lower water basin, which we couldn't build to the size that we wanted. That's now proving a hindrance to producing the amounts of sustainable energy we want. That's disappointed many of the island's residents. They'd hoped electricity bills would fall. Instead, just like in the rest of the country, costs for power have actually gone up. That's because prices for energy are regulated centrally in Spain. Lots of people now say the project was all wind and no substance. They announced that our island would be provided with 100% sustainable energy, and that hasn't happened. We ask why not, and don't get any answers. Somebody needs to explain to us why it's not working. The developers once promised to shut down the old diesel-driven power plant, but no one talks about that anymore. A fuel tanker still makes regular trips to the island, and the old plant smokestacks still blow lots of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as the brand new wind turbines spin on the heights above. The operator's press spokeswoman defends the expensive investment. She says that despite speed bumps, El Hierro's energy mix is now much more environmentally friendly than it was in the past. In the first year of operations, in 2016, we saved nearly 7,000 tons of diesel. That means we emitted 14,000 tons less of CO2, and other islands will profit from the pioneering work we've done. What did we get right? What wrong? It's in the nature of things that pioneering projects are experimental, and that they also serve to help optimize future facilities. The engineers are certain they can improve efficiency in their sustainable energy mix, but they've grown much more careful about what they promise. A series of events is planned to reignite enthusiasm for the project among residents and encourage other islands to follow in their footsteps. The UNESCO Biosphere Reserve is doing its best to continue to be a leader in environmental protection. El Hierro used to be viewed by European sailors as the end of the world. But when it comes to shifting completely to renewable energy, at least it's now made progress toward a new beginning.